trying this again. Sorry about the confusion. Um, hello and welcome to Dark Age Growing. I tried to get this out a minute ago, but uh, it wasn't working. <sighs> now nobody's going to find the stream. Oh well. Let's go with it. Uh, oh, hey, there we go. Somebody found me. Somebody found me. Good. I'm glad you guys found me. Hey, uh, welcome to Dark Age Growing. Uh, today I want to go over garden pests because, well, there's a number of them out there. They uh, they need to be taken care of. Uh, Let's see. So the one that I'm going to be showing in my own garden, if I can find it, is uh, squash bugs on my potato plants, which is not fun. Not fun. Uh, this is the first year that I've ever had squash bugs. And I also had a question. Unfortunately, I don't remember who it was from. Uh, his, his full question is in the community tab on my channel today. Uh, it was to the effect of I have fire ants in my yard in between my garden beds and grow bags and containers. And I'd like to go ahead and address that real quick. The way to get rid of fire ants, the way to, well, combat. <laughs> I, I can't even necessarily say that you'll get rid of them permanently, but the way to combat fire ants is uh, from many angles. You can go after them directly with things like vinegar and water or um, as a spray solution on the, on the ants that you see. You can go after the ants um, through their gut with um, baking soda and powdered sugar. They'll take it back to their hive as food and it, uh, and it dries them out. Um, you can also do that with borax. Um, sorry about, I'm, I'm reading something on my screen. Um, all right, hopefully we're not dropping too many frames. Uh, you just want to know that things are going okay. Anywho, um, borax and powdered sugar, borax, powdered sugar, and yeast, uh, those all work as good ant baits. Um, put them in a little tray, put them near their, uh, near their ant mounds, and the ants will eat it up, and mostly they will take it back to their base, to their hive, uh, their nest. There we go, their nest. And it will, well, it'll either dehydrate them or the yeast will expand in their guts and, and, rupture, the, and rupture the ants' guts. So that's a number of ways to take care of fire ants. Um, but also you can deter them with cinnamon, sprinkling cinnamon around the plants and the beds will deter them from going in that direction. Um, I've had good results with using cinnamon in the house, and I've heard of people using it in the garden. Um, can somebody give me a, a note in the chat see if I can either even see your, your guys' chats right now. I may not be able to see it. Um, let's see here. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure if I could see your guys' responses on the on my screen or not. Uh, sometimes there's issues where uh, 
Yeah, the, the chat just stops working on my end. Okay, audio is good too. Good, good. So, I have a, uh, a spray bottle here that I have put uh, dish solution into. Uh, a couple drops of Dawn dish soap in water is also another way to kill uh, insects and particularly the soft bodied uh, pests. So it also works on ants. So I'm going to go over to my uh, squash plants now and show you a little bit of the uh, squash bugs so you can see what they look like and what their eggs look like. Go. My squash plants are not looking their happiest right now. I probably could water them a little bit more frequently than I do. But part of the reason we have issues is the squash bugs. So let's see if we have any of them out and about right now. I've been scraping off uh, a lot of squash eggs, squash bugs eggs already to combat them. But I wanted to see if I can find some and show you guys what squash bug eggs look like. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. Let's see if we can see here. Let's just see if I can zoom in a little bit. So right here. This is very characteristic of squash bag eggs. Uh, they happen, they lay eggs in batches of like 20 on the bottom edges of leaves. The easiest way to deal with squash, bugs egg, uh, squash bug eggs is actually just to scrape them off and let them drop to the ground. There's enough insect predators that live in and around most plants that these will actually get eaten up by other natural insect predators like uh, beetles, actually, do a pretty good job of dealing with those. Let me zoom you guys back out. Come on. There we go, zooming out. Is that as far out as we go? I think so. Alright. Now, the squash bugs themselves actually look like probably giant aphids is about the best way to describe what squash bugs look like. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um... I may not be able to find any squash bugs right now. Uh, they actually go into hiding during the heat of the day. Which can be a way to combat them. Is as they go into hiding, uh, you put out boards on the ground. I'd, I'd say they probably like winter squash more, winter squash pumpkins more. Um, 
than summer squash. I haven't really, I haven't found them on my zucchini. I haven't found them on my cucumber. Um, I, but again, this is the first year that I've ever had them. So I'm not certain. I, I'd probably say they're equal opportunity. Um, so one issue that goes along with squash bugs is they like um, going deeper into the ground, into the grasses, into the mulch during the day to avoid um, the heat. Um, but I've got my spray bottle here. If I had, uh, if I could see the squash bugs, I would be spraying uh, the squash bugs. But I would give her a liberal spray onto the squash bugs. Uh, the same spray can be used on aphids. It can be used on ants. And... Uh, it works on most insects, but it's very non-toxic. Like I said, it's just a couple drops of Dawn dish soap in water. And the, the Dawn dish soap just affects the surface tension of their exoskeletons, basically. Um, yeah, letting, letting water get it, uh, um, escape from them. Oh, I'll have to try and make a, a short video with them actually on camera. I've got pictures of them, but I don't have it. I can't seem to find any of the squash bugs right now. I saw a couple earlier today. Um, other insects. Uh oh. Oh, shoot. Uh, give me two minutes. I've got to go get another phone for me to be able to see your uh, see your messages now my streaming source is having issues I can't see if you're commenting now or not. I hope that things are still working right on the stream. I would love to answer more of your questions. So while I'm getting this set up, please send me a couple of questions, uh, either dealing with pests or not. Uh, anything to do with the garden is great. Okay, from Zero to Homestead, uh, thanks for coming. Loyal Grow Show, hey, thanks Homestead. for coming. Uh, thanks for coming. Any tips for thrips that actually work? Oh my gosh, thrips. I don't think I get thrips up here. I'm not sure. Um, I'm actually not sure what thrips are for certain. All right, we're gonna switch this back around so you can see me again. Let me get back into into my shady spot.
Um, Uh, so the insecticidal uh, insecticidal soaps or neem oils don't work well enough for you. Um, Yeah, so um, from what I, uh, I just did a fast search, um, what everybody else is saying, um, leaf hoppers? I I really haven't dealt with them. Uh, I trying to think if uh, yeah, I really haven't paid as much attention to thrips if I do have them. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, no. It, it, from what the little in, uh, little bit of research I can do, people are saying the soapy water trick, uh, the soapy soapy water, uh, possibly a neem oil, is uh, is enough to deal with them. But I I really wouldn't know. I in most years I don't even spray anything at all. Even the aphids. If the aphids get something, the aphids get something. Uh, this year, I'm, I've been trying to be a little bit more uh, on top of it because I'm more worried about my food. Yeah, uh, that, that could very well be that, that they have them and in most of the plants, I just don't even notice. I've got a lot of aphid issues um, going into the, the, the heat of the summer. I really noticed the aphid issues, and this year I noticed the squash bugs. Um, for the most part, I leave ants alone in my garden. Uh, they're more help than hindrance, except for when they decide to farm aphids. That's really annoying. Have you guys ever had that happen where the ants actually farm the aphids for their honeydew? Okay, good. Uh, so, praying the ester says that they've been battling aphid problem with the dish liquid mixed with water and that did the trick. Um, Oil Grow Show says that they've been trying to get rid of the um, the thrips with a lot of things and nothing's been working. Um, Scarlet Isabel, uh, we have an abundance of stink bugs. Yes, yes, the stink bugs are bad and. A lot of them are actually the imported Asian ones. They came in on a boat in the 90s, and I think they started here in the northwest, and they've spread all the way to the east coast now. There's there's other varieties of stink bugs for sure, but um, but there there was an Asian one that's been really getting bad, and they find nooks and crannies, and inside the house especially, to hide in during the winters. To survive them. Diatomaceous earth can definitely help. Um, Scarlet, Scarlet Isabel. Um, but a lot of people have issues getting it applied right. Um, you can use different types of um, powder spritzers or, or, um, or just lightly dusting things. But if it's been raining or it's going to rain, 
uh, diatomaceous earth can be a hard one to keep active. Here. Uh, this year, how's everybody's garden doing? I, I feel like I don't ask that enough. Um, it, have you guys been growing a lot, or are you, um, and are you guys saving seeds from your plants? Um, I'm just now finally getting my spring peas off of my fence. I was actually eating some fresh peas, um, sugar daddy peas. They were really small, but, uh, they were fresh and sweet still because the weather around here had switched cool again and the flowers started blooming and getting pollinated. Let's see, I can take you uh, for a quick walkabout of my garden just to show you what's going on. Uh, I can also show you the carrot seeds that I sprouted two weeks ago. They've started coming up and I've had to move off the cardboard. So give me just a second and we'll move over to the garden. So over here, real quick, on the way in, I have a wall of sunchokes. I don't water them much, so th any of the leaves that are dying on these is actually because I just let them, kind of let them go. Uh, they, they wilt down a little bit in the heat of the day, and then I water every three to four days for these guys. They're in a shallow bed uh, that drains a lot. It's just a couple inches of soil on top of gravel. But over here in the corners and against the fence closest to my garden, they are growing really tall, uh, probably 8, 10, 9, 10 feet uh, for the tallest one right here on the corner. And this is still the pumpkin uh, growing on my fence line. So we'll see what happens if it finally decides to, to actually produce anything. Um... So I can't see your guys' chat right now, so I'm just going to do a quick walkabout. Anyways, this is still the same uh, peas that I had growing this spring. I think I've eaten. Oh, oh there's, there's a little pea right there. And that's a brand new one trying to come out. Anyways, I've pulled most of the peas out of here. Got my, all of my potatoes are out finally. I'll have the official weigh-in. Um, I'll either make a video of it or I will make a quick, um, I'll make a, I'll make a video of, of it. I've got a few shots of harvesting and I just need to weigh it all. Down here, these guys are carrot seeds. And I've got some grass seeds that sprouted. I have a few different things in here that tried sprouting. They weren't consistent. Uh, high points dried out and didn't sprout. Low points uh, sprouted up really good. Uh, carrots out through here. My tomatoes. This batch of tomatoes. This was an heirloom variety called persimmon. 
Unfortunately, I haven't gotten any off of it yet. Been getting a lot of blossom end rot. It's really kind of sad. This was a mullein plant. They're good for respiratory issues. Been collecting seed off of it. Up through here. With these guys, the, uh, the seeds just come out when they're ready to, when they're ready to come out. They're a biannual. I will, uh, I'll probably, after I get the rest of this harvested up, I might have a little giveaway of some... Uh, mullein seed along with a few others Maybe next week I will set up a giveaway. Oops. Sorry about that This is my kale I let it go to flower Bees love it unfortunately If it's love it too But managed to get a lot of seed going on it. These ones are really easy to collect the seed. As it's uh, as they dry out, this is just on the edge of being dry enough to collect the seed from. For the most part, I would let the um, the seed heads dry a little bit more. But it just splits open, and the seeds all come out of it. Super easy to collect seed from kale, so long as you're not growing uh, other, letting other things go to seed at the same time. You'll be able to get kale and not something else. Um, let's see here, tomatoes. So these are a, yeah, this is a bush, a couple of bush tomatoes up front. Early girl. So far, early girl's been doing pretty good for me. It's a hybrid, but it's consistent, and it's the only thing that's been producing uh, tomato for me so far. I've got a lot of green ones. Ready, uh, ready and waiting on those other plants. But uh, the early girl is coming through for me. Okay, spin around a little bit more. Spin, spin, spin. Sorry about that. Now I got a question for you guys, and I'll I'll check back in with the comments in just a minute after I'm done moving around and taking you on a tour uh, cucumbers what size cucumbers do you guys like you guys like harvesting them about eight inches long or do you usually end up waiting for them to be closer to 12 inches and uh, and they have a little bit more uh, bulk and uh, and girth on them uh, zucchinis, not cucumbers. Did I say cucumbers earlier? I'm sorry, zucchinis. Um, oh, I have to water tonight. I have a row of uh, beans. I planted those beans two weeks ago, right after the last live show that I had. And real quick, come through here. Popcorn. So this is a uh, Japanese popcorn, uh, Japanese holus popcorn. So supposedly they 
after they pop, they don't have the issues of uh, well, leaving holes in, uh, holes in your teeth. They've been doing really well. Now, just so that people can say and see that I'm not even joking, this is the same tomato plant in it from a video over a month ago. It's now an uh, inch and a half tall. There's something wrong with that soil. I've just left it just to see if it ever produces a flower or not. I have two other ones that are even shorter. They were all planted at the same time. That's the biggest one of the seeds planted in that soil. Over here is the peaches and cream sweet corn. And I've got, I started with 33 seeds and uh, two of them just weren't doing well. I had a feeling they wouldn't, so I pulled them out. And they were kind of up in the front here. Now, I've had a couple of other things decide to try to sprout up, and I don't know that you can see it in there or not. But deep inside, down there, is a uh, Russian kale. Because I had Russian kale back there that I let sprout, or uh, not sprout, but go to seed. And uh, I also have a, a pea seed decided to, to come up in the middle of all this. So I've just kind of left them to see what happens. My other things around here, nothing to really write home about. They're doing okay. They're not doing amazing. It's growing lots of weeds still, obviously. My fruit trees didn't produce anything this year. My, um, oh, geez. My grapes uh, got sun scorched. Back here. Got strawberries that think it's June. I've got a few raspberries uh, tucked away that I won't get to, but they're producing raspberries again. It's been a weird year. Anybody else feel like it's been a weird year? <laughs> oh, geez. All right. Oh, yes. So this is a tub of, of um, potatoes just about ready to come out. These guys are dying back. And... Uh, yeah, why not? I can pull out a batch of potatoes real quick. See what we got. Oh yes, that's right. These are the uh, royal purple. Or all purple. Squishy one. Hold up a couple of these in the sunlight. They've been in the ground a little while. Yep, those ones are done. They, um, they have an interesting texture to the skin, this batch. They should be nice and smooth, more like those ones, that one. This one's got kind of a crackled, craggly surface. I'll need to look into that. Maybe one of you guys knows what happens with potatoes, um, why they get that type of surface. Is it an age thing? Yeah, I don't know. 
Might be the swell. No, I'm not pulling them all out right now. I'm just checking that one spot. Yeah, got about a pound. All right, let me come back over here and see if I can check the comment section now. All right. Um, oh, yes, my sweet potatoes are doing well now. They're starting to spread out, get longer vines. I put dirt on some of the vines to uh, see if I can set down a few more roots. This is the purple speckled corn. Um, it's doing okay. A couple of them are doing pretty good. I need to keep watering them. What I have down on the ground is um, well, it's cornmeal. It's actually a way of keeping down weeds from growing. And it also adds new, uh, some nutrients back to the soil. In particular, nitrogen, which is, well... Corn is a heavy nitrogen feeder as a grass. That's what grows them taller and will help them produce the most. And our gladiolas have been blooming. And then back here is the dragon's tongue, a horticultural bean. And they are producing. So as a good thing to grow in the shade, or part shade at least, uh, needs about six hours of daylight, is uh, beans. Beans and peas can grow good in about, uh, yeah, about eight hours, of, uh, six, uh, six, eight hours of, of light. Now we're gonna switch you back around so you can see me. And I'm going to sit back down. We're gonna take one more look at the comment section. Uh, just give me a second. All right, so let's see what we got. Uh, peas did well. Spring turnip beets were a flop, uh, Melody says. Wax beans coming on strong, summer squash, so-so, potatoes looking good, corn stalks fabulous, ears are seem small. Uh, spaghetti squash is that fruit, that's great. Um, tennis ball size. Um, you got hummingbirds. The only tomatoes doing well is a volunteer from last year. This year's are stunted, yeah. I have, I have a few volunteers at my grandfather's place that, they were volunteers, they're a little behind, but they're doing pretty good. Uh, they're setting on, I think, Romas. I think I've got Roma volunteers up at my grandfather's. So that should be, that should be pretty cool. Uh, you're getting lots, of, uh, Melody says, lots of radish seeds uh, from, from her globe radishes. That's good. Rule of thumb, pick zucchini and crookneck the day following blossom drops. After that, they are giveaways. Ah, okay. I can go with that. Well, hey, um... Yeah, if I had to, to say anything, last couple words on those, um, pests. For the most part, dish soap and water um, can be a great insecticidal soap. I mean, just basic Dawn dish soap with water. Uh, your neem oil will add to the potency. Um, if you have it, you can add mint oils, uh, both spearmint, peppermint, any of those types of things to your insecticidal soaps. And those will help not only kill the insects that you're trying to spray, but it can also deter some insects from coming around. A um, couple more questions, if anybody has them. 
uh, drop them on the on the chat right now, and we'll probably wrap this up. I've got a few more things to do this evening. Uh, sorry we didn't get the, the videos out this week. Been been a weird week. Let's just say that. Well, next week, I think we will talk on the Grand Solar Minimum. I'll start out the, the conversation in the live stream with Grand Solar Minimum, and we will see where that goes. Oh, GLADS. Okay, I thought I saw that. I'm like, glass? Glass brings in the hummingbirds. Uh, yeah, gladiolas definitely bring in the hummingbirds. Yes, I, I heartily agree with that. Uh, another one that I love and I have it growing on a dead tree at my grandpa's place is the trumpet vines. Trumpet vines do great for that. And then, uh, if nothing else, they, they are great for the pollinators. Um, yeah, I've been keeping busy. Uh, seed sales are starting to go down, but I'm going to put out a post, uh, probably in a day or two, on my community tab with a uh, coupon code, and uh, that's going to take the, the price of the whole website down by 20%. I'm going to just start running like a 20% sale uh, for the next couple weeks and I I actually still have seeds that never made it to the website sweat drop uh, <laughs> well Checking for last minute comments, last minute questions or concerns. I guess this is it. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with me this evening. And in the replay, um, thank you for watching. This, this really helps my channel to grow and uh, yeah just uh work on growing food this is uh, this is the time going into the fall uh that a lot of people ignore and it can be just as productive as a spring garden here in the pacific northwest we've got about 70 days before our next frost or before our first frost of the year and a lot of things can be started right now to grow into the frost. And uh, some varieties of beans can even still get planted right now. But it's time I'm about to plant um, beets and peas, and my kale. I'm gonna give it a shot and uh, try some lettuce. The weather is starting to turn cooler already. We've had a few days in the 90s, and um, we're supposed to be in the 70s and 80s for the rest of the week. So we'll see where that gets us going into the fall. It'll be interesting to see what happens this year. Yeah, Lucy, Brenton, uh, thank you for joining. And... Okay, um, so got a question about clay soil in uh, the garden. Sand and compost. Adding sand and compost to clay soil is your, is your best thing to do. And then beyond that, it would be um, watering deeply 
and instead of a um, instead of a short watering because water takes longer to soak into clay and is more likely to run off. Uh, possibly making divots directly around your plants so that the water actually stays with the plant instead of running off. Yep, compost and sand. So uh, Lucy Brendan says that we've done the compost. Yeah, the sand is definitely the next step. That'll help the water get down to the roots better and will also loosen the soil or make it stick to itself less and things will do better. Even, even your um, deeper rooted vegetables, once you add the sand to it, you can grow um, your carrots and Especially if you work the sand down to uh, 10 inches or a foot, um, that's probably the best option to go for. Oleus. Mm. Yeah, no, carrot, carrots just don't do well in, in clay soil. Yeah, you, you could probably do beets. Beets are actually a, an oddball for a root crop. They do well, they can, certain beets can do well with clay soil because they'll just push themselves out of the ground and form their bulb of the, um, the beet root basically at the surface. Um, the other option is running something like um, sunflowers, and beans in, in the soil. And then as they are finished, uh, chopping them off at the ground and leaving the roots in the ground because that'll add more organic matter and the, the nitrogen back into the soil also, uh, along with breaking up the, the clay soil. Work the work the soil. Work the work whatever you're working into the into the clay for sure. So, well, I got a little bit of a late start to the to the stream, but it's about five o'clock and I need to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, my kids are probably making a bit of a mess inside the house. I heard them a minute ago and they were throwing something. My Amanda is in there with them and uh, I haven't heard her, her, her uh, having to yell at them so maybe they aren't too bad but they're going to be getting hungry. They're going to want dinner soon and I've been the, the main cook of the family for a while so I should get in there, get them some food. I hope you guys all uh, got a little bit of information, especially about combating the, the pests in the first half of the show. And uh, yeah, just, just grow more food, become as self-resilient, self-reliant as you can. Self-sustainable, not necessarily possible, but uh, self-reliance is, is definitely a goal to work for in these times. Thank you guys so much, and everybody have a good night.